Hi, I'm Tanik Sims 2, but you can call me Tanny, and today we are doing something a bit different from the Corruption Chronicles. It's kind of a gamble, uh, but basically I mentioned in the second part of How Corrupt is Strange Town anyway that I'm on round 9 of um, Pleasant View that I've been playing for just over a year now and I've been considering recording gameplay for it for a while now and a few of you guys said you'd be interested in seeing it so this one's for you guys. <laughs> Uh, since there's a lot of recapping to do, I thought I'd start with an intro video uh, where I give a brief overview of everything important that's happened so far and introduce you to all of my households before I start recording proper gameplay. Like I said, this is Pleasant View after 9 rounds, so I estimate it as being something like 65 or so years from the start of the storyline. So unfortunately that means all of the original adults and elders have now passed, but there are still some familiar faces around and I guess it will kind of be like playing some sort of custom hood uh, since I have a lot of soap opera-esque storylines going on. Also I'm hesitant to mention this because I don't want to hype it up and it's also kind of ironic and almost embarrassing to admit this considering my Corruption Chronicles series but I kind of think it's uh, not the cleanest. <laughs> I never did or do any VBTs and I have all the essential anti-corruption mods but the thing is that I only got the clean templates for Pleasant View then Blue Water Village and Downtown all by um, Meet me to the river. Uh, however, I didn't download a clean template for some state university or Tweaky Island, the Bon Voyage vacation hood. And I also didn't install clean or empty stealth hoods at the time. So I think those could be contributing factors in it potentially not being the healthiest. Uh, also wasn't as careful as I am now about uh, checking each lot I download and placing the hood. Uh, not that I was downloading occupied lots because that's of course a front row seat <laughs> for a fiery ball visible from space. But sometimes sim references can linger and I never thought to clean any lots I downloaded just in case. But yeah, basically I've noticed a few weird glitches over the past few months. Uh, not that many and it's by no means unplayable at all. For example, like a dormy trying to introduce Mortimer Goth to my sim through networking despite the fact that Mortimer was long dead. The only way to contact him is, you know, through a seance. <laughs> Another sim randomly thought he was engaged to his first cousin once removed, whom he'd never even met. Uh, and more recently, when the youngest Tinker child was a toddler, she had a want uh, for customer gain to star, since they have a home business. And later, Malcolm Langrab's widow, a theatre sim, would be chased by her toddler. <laughs> anyway, I just figured that if it is toast, then this would be a perfect time to start documenting it, uh, just in case it does blow up. <laughs> It's brought me a lot of joy over a very tough year, so I want to have fond memories of it and share it with you guys and hope it can make you as happy as it makes me. I'm going to just go through each household and give you a basic rundown of their backstories and where they're up to. Uh, so when I start playing with them, you'll hopefully be more familiar with them and hopefully not be like, okay, who are they and well, why should I care about them? <laughs> I'm probably not going to go in my you know, play order just because I jump back and forth between uh, the the hood. So I've got some sims living downtown, I've got some sims living in Blue Water Village. For now I'm going to stick with Pleasant View, uh, the main hood. I think I'll start here with the this mansion. It's the first household in my rotations, uh, so I've actually already played them for round 9. I've written them an up-to-date bio, some of the family buyers aren't up to date, so I'll have to um, explain them. <laughs> 
So I've written, who could have thought Dante Lothario, a high climber with sights set on success, would settle down before his little brother? And can Morty make amends with his ex-wife Eve for the sake of their daughter? So if you can guess by the surname um, and the the mansion, the helicopter, the wealth that they have, they are the youngest sons of Cassandra Goth and Don Lothario who married in the intro round of the scripted event. Dante is the second youngest. They have four children together, so Dante is the second youngest. And he's a fortune sim, and he's always been very preoccupied with his career. He wants to reach the top of the adventure career, become a space pirate, which he did. He did that, he achieved that through a lot of hard work. Because he'd achieved that, he started rolling once to uh, go on dates and meet people. And so he met Simon, who was a downtown, he was a teenager, teenage downtown, they actually met when they were teenagers and they were each other's sort of first love but Dante went to uni and they sort of grew apart and Dante focused on his career so they didn't really meet up again, they didn't really have much of a relationship until quite recently and then while on a date they both wanted to marry each other, they wanted to get engaged and I thought that's great, like <laughs> if they want to do that that's fine but of course the irony, irony in a very loose sense you know, the alliance Ernest Morissette definition. Morty, the youngest son of Cassandra and Don, he was born quite soon after Mortimer died, so I named him Morty. He's a family son, so his, you know, sort of vocation in life is to settle down. And it's very ironic to me that Dante actually did get married before him, well technically Morty has been married, he married Eve Pleasant, who we'll, we'll, we'll get on to in a second, but he was briefly married to Eve Pleasant. It didn't end well, it was very short lived um, because Morty actually had an affair that Eve fought. I don't know whether to reveal who it was with, uh, she's no longer with us, she's no longer alive. It was a very bizarre pairing, it was not done by me, it was ACR <laughs> doing its thing. But he had an affair with an older lady out of completely nowhere and he caught it. So she left and she fell pregnant while on their honeymoon. And so they now have a daughter who's a child, going to be a teenager in round nine. I haven't played there round yet. And now that his lover has passed, he has sort of begun to rekindle his relationship with Eve. But the thing is, she has other other suitors. <laughs> so I think a good idea then would be to go to Eve. Uh, I have not updated the bio. <laughs> it's very outdated. This is Eve, Eve Pleasant. She's the uh, the youngest, the third daughter of Daniel and Mary Sue Pleasant. They sort of worked their marriage out, they repaired it, they got some love back only for Mary Sue to catch Daniel cheating with the maid with Kaylin Langerak uh, at Daniel's birthday party, no less. So that was, um, that was dramatic. That's what I mean by like the soap opera element that I kind of like about May Pleasant -y. But yes, this is Susie, Susie Pleasant. I named her after Mary Sue, Susie. Uh, she is the daughter of Eve and Morty from when they were married very briefly. And she actually has two other children, they're twins, and they were not planned. <laughs> they were not the, the idea I had in mind for her. Oh yeah, uh, it gets even more dramatic, even more twisted. Because um, the grandmother of these twins, she had an affair. She was with, with Morty. So these aren't Morty children there and another man who lives in downtown and their grandmother is the reason why Eve and Morty divorced. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking um, I might start with them in the gameplay. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure who to start with but I haven't come to them yet. <laughs> oh, I have two families living in these apartments duplex it comes in the, the bin, the house bin uh, that I've added to the neighbourhood, sort of done up, made it more pleasant viewy, if that makes sense. That's not ideal. That's not good. 
Ooh. We have some familiar faces now. We have Angela and Dustin. They are doing very well for themselves. Um, Dustin turned his life around completely and now they are very successful. He achieved his lifetime want of reaching the top of the medical career. So he's a chief of staff, I believe is the top chief of staff. They are in a great place. Yeah, Dustin and Angela are living the suburban dream Dustin only ever saw on TV growing up. Both have the dream jobs, a cozy albeit beautiful house with a small garden, perfect for their, this is quite old because it's perfect for their two sporty little boys. They have three, three sons now uh, who aren't very little, they are grandparents now. But obviously when I wrote this, <laughs> They had their twins, they had Kevin and Kyle. They had another son quite late, uh, who also wasn't planned. He was a lovely surprise. <laughs> but yeah, they now are sort of enjoying their, their golden years. They've worked hard and they are grandparents now. They're a very unproblematic family, I think. <laughs> I know I say here, well, Angela's eyes begin to wander. Um, they didn't, spoiler alert, um, her secondary aspiration is romance. Uh, I kind of thought she was going to stray, but she didn't. They are very in love with each other, it's quite cute. They actually, when they were teenagers, uh, Dustin for some reason, he just started um, being not very nice to Angela and it was very out of the blue. I don't know why it happened, but he autonomously started, you know, doing not nice things <laughs> to her, uh, arguing a lot. and I. I felt that Angela wouldn't put up with that, especially because of what her parents went through. I think she would leave. So she left him, but in college they sort of reunited and they fell in love again and they've ended up here. So they're just a, a nice household to play. It's a real rags to riches sort of family. It's, it's very pleasant. <laughs> and then the Caliente household family. This is Kevin, as I mentioned just now. So this is one of the twins, Kevin. He's sort of with the love of his life, Mia Caliente. She's the daughter of Nina and Don. So Don actually was not very faithful in his marriage to Cassandra, unfortunately. He was a good dad, but he wasn't the best husband. And Cassandra actually never, uh, never knew or she was aware. She ignored it. Uh, very sad, it was very awful to watch. He fathered two illegitimate children. He fathered uh, Nathan with Kaylin and Mia with Nina. So Kevin and Mia are probably sims I wanted, I wanted them to be together. Uh, they have the same aspiration, they're both fat, uh, fortune, so I thought they have the same sort of, uh, you know, hopes for life and I thought they would be perfect and I think they are actually three bulk. But while Mia was a teenager, it didn't work out that way. She actually fell for Kevin's twin, twin brother, uh, Kyle. So they had a relationship when they were teenagers and the whole time I was like, no, <laughs> like I don't like to, I play a once based gameplay style and I like to have each sim have their own path that they choose. I don't want to pave it for them. I want them to decide. I want them to fall in love with whoever they fall in love with and if they have affairs, I don't want to intervene as much as, you know, it would hurt me. <laughs> it hurts to see them have affairs. I like to let them do what they want to do with probably the help of ACR. But I wanted them together. So they became sort of friends, but they never acted on anything. Um, Mia and Kyle were very faithful. Kyle's a generation older. He was born the round for Mia. He didn't go to uni. He aged up to an adult straight away and he ended up falling in love with a, a dormy. I have a mod, uh, I think it's Sijon where apartment neighbours are townies and when the townie pool runs out because I have a lot of apartments, it dormies move in instead as apartment neighbours. So that happened and he, while he was living with Angela and Dustin, a dormie moved in next door where Kevin now lives. They fell in love, they were both family sims and they got on. And then meanwhile Mia went to college and she fell in love with Axel, Axel Dreamer who is Lilith and Dirk's son. They fell in love and the whole time I was like okay they've chosen each other, I can't. As much as I want her and Kevin together, 
together as much as I ship them. <laughs> it's what they want. So they graduated uni together and they moved in together and um, Kevin was in the bachelor household in, in downtown which I'll get to. And they remained very close friends and they didn't act upon anything despite their three bolts. And then one day they did act upon it. Uh, they went out together. Somehow <laughs> Kevin, who never really, uh, he's a fortune sim again, he was very focused on his career in the oceanography career. He wants to reach the top. So all his wants were sort of focused on gaining skills and getting promotions and nothing else. But with Mia, and with Mia as well, this was surprising because her secondary is um, romance. They did act upon their what they wanted and so I had them go on a date and they both rolled the one to get engaged. So they are currently engaged. They haven't wanted to get married yet. I don't know if they ever will. <laughs> it's really up to them. I really want Kevin to become Kevin Caliente. I think he would take on her last name. Now, of course, they have they have twins. I have a lot of twins in Pleasant View. Of course, she had twin daughters, so I had to I had to do the I had to call one Mina and I had to call one Gina. I had to. I just wanted to continue the tradition. <laughs> oh, the other interesting thing. <laughs> I don't know why this is like a common theme, a common thread <laughs> in my Pleasant View. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh, um, Kevin actually had a thing with Mina. Mia doesn't know this, Mia never knew this, but Kevin had a fling <laughs> with his now fiance's mother, who's, um, she was the last of the original adults in Pleasant View to pass. Uh, that's all there is for them. And here is Mia's half-brother, Nathan. Nathan is the son of Don and Kaylin. So you may be wondering why are they um, the Pleasant family? Why is he Nathan Pleasant? Why is he Nathan Pleasant, not Nathan Lothario or Nathan Langerath? He was born Nathan Langerath, but Kaylin then married Daniel when he divorced from Mary Sue and of course took his name, became Kaylin Pleasant, and they had their own son together. They had Isaac. And so I thought, you know, story wise, maybe Daniel adopts Nathan because Nathan and Don never had a relationship. Don would send money through child support but Nathan would, you know, they had no contact. So Daniel was his father, you know, he was his father regardless of, of genetics and biology. They, they were family. So in Cynthia I just changed his name to Nathan plus when Kaylin and Daniel got married. So then it was like Daniel adopting Nathan. And that is a Darcy Pleasant. She was born Darcy Dreamer. She is the only daughter of Brandy and Darren. Uh, they got married. They chose each other. They had three bolts. They wanted to be together. But yeah, Darcy is the youngest and only daughter of Darren and Brandy. So Darcy and Nathan, they're I think it's the same situation with um, Carl and Mia, where they were a generation apart, but they'd met as teenagers and they, they hit it off, they dated. And then Nathan went to uni and Darcy was still a teenager, so they split and um, saw other people. Well, Darcy, I don't think she saw anyone else through college, but Nathan had, you know, other other partners until they just sort of got back together. They sort of just rekindled their relationship as adults and eventually they wanted to get married and so they did. <laughs> They're a very straightforward family, to be honest. There's no real drama, there's no affair. I think the most interesting thing is that Nathan, as a teenager, he and Kyla, Kyla Burb, the second daughter of Jennifer and John, they had three bolts but they never initiated anything. Kyla was actually dating and is now married to Nathan's half-brother, Nico Lothario. It was very like a Cassandra and Darren sort of situation. It was like Nathan is an arts and crafts sim and he's so in love with this girl who is in love with the Lothario. <laughs> it was like that but nothing ever came of it and now Nathan is with Darcy who actually is the daughter of Darren. After Darren died, um, he died, I think he was the first of my original adults to die quite like a long time ago. After he passed and the children, Darren's son Dirk and 
Brandy's children, her sons, and their children together, Darcy and David. Once they'd grown up, Brandy bought herself a salon and she became a hairdresser. So Darcy has inherited the salon. That's her business now. But she's also in the athletic career because her hobby is sport. And her lifetime one, I think, is become Hall of Fame at the top of the athletic career. And then of course they have a, a toddler, a toddler daughter named Venus. Originally I named her because Venus is like super artistic to me and it was like it fit in with Nathan, with Nathan's um, hobby. But then when she was born and I named her Venus, I suddenly realised like, oh my gosh, like that also works for Darcy who loves sport because of Venus Williams. And it was that's just a fun fact and this is Cleo uh, she was Brandy's dog when Brandy was in her last few days she wanted a dog I was very hesitant because uh, she was going to die soon but then I thought no Darcy can she'll come back from college and she will take care of Cleo so now she has the dog and then moving on to the Lothario with Kyla and Nico. Thanks to generous gifts from both their parents, Nico and Kyla were able to afford a beautiful suburban home perfect for raising a family in. Will they succeed as a couple or will their decision to have children so soon lead to them going their separate ways? As you can see, they very happily married. They actually have five children. One of them has just come back from uni, so he's in the family bin. I'm probably going to move him into the bachelor apartment downtown. They have two sets of twins. <laughs> I think I gave Kyla, she's a family sim, so I gave her the super fertility uh, aspiration benefit, which I don't normally give, but it makes sense because she is a twin. She is John and Jennifer's second daughter. Um, she's a twin. She has a twin brother, Tyler. And Nico is the oldest son of Cassandra and Don, and he has a twin, Naomi, who lives downtown. Nico was named after Don's father, Nicolo, and Kyla and Tyler, I just thought, sounded really, really funny. <laughs> They're doing well. They have two sets of twins. They have Cody, who was uh, engaged to the townie Ivy Kapoor, not the adult one, the teenage one. They met as teenagers and I aged her up when Cody aged up, he didn't want to go to uni. And they have more twins, they have Ryan and Noah, and they have a, a single son, who's Dylan. It's not really much else to say, that's just sort of a family unit. It's very much like the original Burr family with John and Jennifer, a lot of kids, suburban dream. And speaking of <laughs> very different <laughs> so this is summer summer but she is the fourth child of john and jennifer the youngest she went to uni she was actually graduating when dorian akagi he's um a downtownie one of the teenage downtownies with the makeup is actually a, a trico teen so he's a descendant of john smith trico as a teenager dorian was actually dating willow got who is alexander and Lucy's oldest daughter and I thought wow I can't wait because I want them to be together I want Dorian to take Willow's last name because oh my gosh how perfect would that be Dorian got it didn't work like that Willow didn't go to college but Dorian when he moved into college uh, Summer was graduating they met and they they fell in love <laughs> totally not what I planned but they wanted to be together so it's kind of sad because um, Summer is Willow's auntie, so that's dramatic. You may have noticed though that they are very pale. They are vampires. I was hesitant to include the occult, the supernatural sims in my pleasant view until round one when Dina, she had a child, she had a baby and the baby was born with green skin, her recessive genes that are restored in the clean template I use. And so I thought, well, Dina already comes with alien roots. Um, the same as Mia, she, I, I forgot to mention, she's got the recessive alien genes from Nina. So I thought, well, if aliens are already in this in this game, well, why not add the other occult? And I thought, who more perfect for being a vampire than a tree cootie, you know? So I had him uh, meet the, the grand vampire, the Contessa, got bitten, and then Summer, as a knowledge sim, she rolled the want to become a vampire, and it started sort of this epidemic where <laughs> I have a lot of knowledge sims because I use the zodiac uh, system to decide aspirations. I have a lot of Sagittarians and Sagittarians in that system are knowledge sims. So I have a lot of knowledge sims and 
all of them now want to be vampires because it's cool. But I think Summer and Dorian are like the perfect candidates for vampires, you know? So, the Broke family. One of many. I have many Broke families, so it will get confusing. I'll try and figure out a way to um, properly, you know, distinguish between each one. But this is Kyle Broke, um, Kevin Broke's twin brother, so son of Angela and Dustin. Carl and Sandy's ever-expanding family may be all they've ever dreamed, but how many more new additions can they handle without their bank accounts dwindling even further? So, they're not super well off. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing okay, but they have to keep renovating the house. It's relatively small. They have to keep renovating it and Sandy's in the architecture career So I always imagine she's doing it herself but they're running out of room. <laughs> they have a lot of kids and they keep wanting kids. So many kids. And their oldest is Eric and they have twins Jessica and Nicole. And their new addition is Jonah who uh, is actually adopted. I think they have a lot of love to give. They just want children, they just want a family around them. I group my households into, you know, family units and then there are the sort of bachelors, bachelorettes and then there are sort of um, not so happy families but they're not, mm, they're pretty rare uh, nowadays <laughs> with Don gone. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of the um, unhappy families are kind of gone. <laughs> uh, this is outdated, um, but basically, yeah, Lilith cut out her parents, she cut out Angela. Um, can't remember if she really, she didn't really have a relationship with Eve because Eve was born, uh, obviously, when the twins were teenagers. They never really knew each other. Uh, Lilith, she had a bad reputation. She wanted a bad reputation. She was getting into fights all the time, at losing her job. Um, when she fell pregnant the first time with Axel, she wasn't very, uh, maternal and I I believe it's because um, you know her mother Mary Sue wasn't the greatest role model right the greatest mother figure really to Lilith so I feel like she was sort of um, just sort of the cycle yeah she's she's done pretty well and uh, she's thriving and so is Dirk he's close to reaching his lifetime one which has become business tycoon he actually was expelled from uni um he didn't have any relevant wants and my in my style you need the right wants you need to want to gain skills you need to want to work on your assignments if you don't you fail it's not enough to fear not graduating or passing or whatever but he's done very well for himself they have a really nice family now and they have uh onyx their daughter onyx she's a family sim and she she had a boyfriend as a teenager jonathan jonathan kim i don't know which um sub that he's a townie of um he starts with the teenager i think it's blue water village i think he's a blue water village townie and they fell in love and um they went to uni together they got engaged and they're sort of living you know the family sim dream <laughs> and she's pregnant with uh, her second child and this is her first child dove dove kim lilith is a great grandmother she is not as in like, you know, she's got like great grandchildren, I mean, she's she's a good grandmother. She's really turned her life around as well. Like, she's doing really well. Like, I love Lilith. Like, or I just, I just want the best for her and I feel like she's achieved that with, with Dirk. Another dream I have? Yeah, so this is Axel. Axel and Onyx, they're actually clones. <laughs> um, the firstborn effects happened. I didn't bother to change appearance because it's like, well, their siblings are going to look similar anyway, right? But I did randomise Onyx's personality so they weren't totally the same. Point is, uh, this is Axel. As I said, he was um, involved with Mia. They lived together in this condo for a while, but she left him for Kevin. And so now he is with Gina, who is another Chiku team. So she was a downtowny and they met as teenagers. They didn't go to uni together, no, um, but they sort of rekindled their relationship and now they're living together. I don't really know what they're going to do, you know, going forward, I don't know. So that will be interesting to find out. Also about the D-name thing, I kind of thought Lilith especially, she's a real rebellious type. I can't see her sticking to family traditions and I feel like Dirk would just have gone along with that. Even though he was quite good with his family, he was very close with Darren and he was he became very close with his stepmother Brandy. So what I would ideally like, if he has a, a child, I would like to continue the D 
tradition, which I did do with Darcy and David, um, but since Darcy is now pleasant, I didn't decide to continue the tradition with Darcy. Another burb house, because of course. <laughs> so this is Tyler, Tyler burb. Tyler has fulfilled his ultimate dream of being a husband and a father and he couldn't be happier. But will his inability to keep a job and desire for more children push wife Michelle away? Yeah, it, it sums that up. Um, Tyler's a family film. He hasn't been the best when it comes to careers. <laughs> he gets fired a lot. A lot of bad chance cards. But Michelle is quite successful. She's in the entertainment career. She was a um, she was a cashier uh, as a teenager. Her natural hair is actually blonde, and I think Tyler has recessive blonde hair from John, uh, from his mother Tiffany, not the point, anyway. <laughs> so they have four children. I don't think they'll have any more, at least not any intentionally, but the oldest is Amelia. Um, she'll be off to college in round nine. And then they have twins Eli and Eden, and they have the youngest son, Johnny. So Johnny was born after John Burb died, so I named him Johnny sort of in his honour and it's really cute because Johnny loves animals. He has a high interest in animals. He wanted a dog so I got them a dog. I think the dog is called Jay. And it's really cute because it's like a throwback to The Sims 1 because in The Sims 1 when uh, John Burp was introduced he was Johnny Burp. I never played Unleashed but I sort of know the, the families. Uh, he was Johnny Burp and he had a dog I think? Oh, he had an animal. <laughs> Yeah, that was the point of the expansion pack. <laughs> I think there's only one more family in the main hood, and that is the another pleasant again. Oh wow, this is old. <laughs> I haven't updated this bio in a while. Kicked out by Mary Sue following a nasty divorce, Daniel Pleasant thought he'd hit rock bottom till his mistress Kaylin offered a deal and somehow coaxed him into marriage. Has Daniel finally settled down in his old age, or is this just the beginning of his golden years? Well, Daniel and Kaylin are are dead. <laughs> that was very blunt. They are no longer with us. <laughs> but they had a son together. They had Isaac. Isaac Pleasant. Isaac is, he's a real, he's a character of his own. He's very surprising. He reminds me a lot of Morty because Morty is so shy. He's painfully shy. Uh, one point, one point for shyness uh, or outgoingness. <laughs> You know when um, Sims are so shy, they they dance like they they barely um, move. Yeah, that it's the same with Isaac. He's so shy. But after Kaylin died, um, Daniel had already passed, and Isaac was only a teenager, and he's a knowledge sim. He was so you know destined for success in the intelligence career, which is what he wants to succeed in. He was in private school and everything. And but when Kay Kaylin died, it's like he just changed. He um, became a shell of who he used to be. And he didn't go to uni, he didn't want to go, which was really shocking because I've had sims not want to go and they're usually family or romance sims, sometimes pleasure sims don't want to go. But Isaac as a knowledge sim was really surprising, he didn't want to go, so he didn't. <laughs> and he sort of just, he just started I guess getting attention from anyone who would give it to him, you know? From any woman who would look at him a certain way. He's one of the few people Melody Tinker from Blue Water Village uh, gets along with. <laughs> she um, had a lot of um, tension with other sims, but they got along quite well, and they have two bolts, and they got along to start dating. Melody went off to uni and came back and they are together and they had accidental twins, more twins because of course. I think it's because Kaylin has uh, the genetic modifier, the pregnancy modifier token. So I think he's just inherited that. And anyway, they have um, twins, um, Danny and Kaylee. <laughs> so yeah, Daniel and Kaylin. Yeah, I like naming babies after ancestors. It's cute. Anyway. So they're together. Oh, yes. So like I said, he, um, despite his shyness, he, he's um, a fan of women, <laughs> to say the least. 
Um, not quite like your dad, but the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, let's say that. And he has three bolts with Naomi Lothario, the only daughter of Cassandra and Don. They acted upon this um, by themselves with ACR. The thing is, Naomi is very not single. <laughs> She lives downtown, so we'll get to her soon. But of course, the real uh, kicker is that um, Isaac's half brother, Nathan, his half sister is Naomi, so it's Isaac is in love with the half sister of his half brother. <laughs> After nine rounds, um, Pleasant V does get a little um, tangled. <laughs> I added um, Blue Otter Village. Uh, into the, the families into the rotation a few rounds in so the ages aren't entirely correct <laughs> i only added the hood really because i wanted dina with malcolm so i was sort of focused on them and i sort of neglected the other families and i started realizing wait the ages are getting a little weird you know melody has memories of um darren dreamer uh, who she didn't get along with and she's enemies with david dreamer but she's still a teenager and david's now an adult or, you know so i just thought i'll i have to add them <laughs> to the rotation okay so let's pretend like it hasn't been like two weeks since the first part of this video <laughs> And the tankers have expanded their family quite a bit <laughs> in my Blue Water Village. They've had a lot more kids. They still own their, their toy store. I don't really have any plans for any heir yet. I don't really know who would really be a good heir. Maybe we can figure that out. I stuck with the, um, the theme they have going on, even though they're not really music and dance sims. I just thought that'd be really cute. But yeah, their second daughter, their second child is Harmony. Harmony Tinker, she didn't go to uni, so she aged up to an adult in round 9 in the playthrough that I just did. And then they had a son, uh, Liar, and then they had a daughter, Aria. And then, well, <laughs> Wanda kept wanting another baby and she was reaching the point where she couldn't have another baby. But I have a mod that makes it so that adopting a child fulfills the want to have a baby, it will fulfill it. So I thought they would adopt. They're very lovely people, they love having a family, they love having children around. So they adopted uh, Zishan, he's a downtowny. I have another mod, I have a lot of mods. <laughs> I have a mod where you can adopt townies, you can adopt teenagers as well. I think that I don't think that's in the normal game. <laughs> but you can adopt townies and I did that just because of character files and bloat. I don't want to keep creating new character files, so I just adopted clicked on the first child downtowny that I saw in the list. So they have an adopted child. They're just a very nice family very wholesome, no problems, it's, it's nice, they're nice to play. Uh, the land grabs then, Malcolm died, <laughs> he passed away uh, this round, round 9. He married Dina uh, round 2 I think, round 2 or 3. They got married and they had one daughter, they had Mimi. I kind of stole that from one of the console games, I, I can't remember which one, maybe busting out, but I thought Malcolm would be very traditional, very patriarchal and I thought he would want like a male heir so he remarried when Dina died and he remarried his employee at the electronic superstore, uh, her name's Erin in my game and she's a family sim so it works out that way. She fell pregnant soon after they got married and um, he passed while she was pregnant. It was quite sad and Elizabeth was born so he never really had a, a son. My plan was always Mimi was going to be the heir and she will continue the Langrab name so if she gets married she'll still be Langrab, it'll be matrilineal. But yeah there was no Malcolm V born to Malcolm. I don't know maybe Mimi will have a Malcolm V. So it's kind of a weird setup at the moment but basically Chanel got So Malcolm's former stepdaughter still lives in the mansion. She's a bachelorette. She's one of my favourites I'm gonna say it. <laughs> 
So she was Dina and Mortimer's oldest daughter. She was a teenager when Malcolm and Dina got married and she's been living in this mansion ever since. <laughs> uh, she has her own business. Um, she owns, I think it was one of the little like like real estate places that I just sort of transformed into a gym. It's not very good, I'm not a builder, but she owns Dream Gym because her hobby is fitness. She didn't really want a job, like a traditional career, and I thought, well, they're loaded. <laughs> I can see her just buying a gym. Yeah, so it was one of those real estate one of those real estate agent places that you uh, that you buy because it was cheap and she just did it up as a, as a gym. Dina also owned her own business as well, Dina's Dresser. It's a clothing shop, very bougie. I guess Mimi, her daughter, inherited it. And of course the Landgrab family also own the Electric Supercenter and um, Club Dante. Is that its name? I never go there because uh, it would need a lot of renovating. I can't be bothered. <laughs> I'm not a builder. Oh, they also bought the grocery store, the Hero Else Grocery. So, the Jacquet jacket family. <laughs> My GCSE in French isn't really helping me right now. But yeah, Denise died in round eight. So last round she died. And Gilbert, well, he owned the bakery, but he gave it to Denise because he had no interest in it really. He's not a cuisine sim, he's not really good at cooking at all. He had like maybe one skill point if that in cooking and he's an arts and crafts sim. He wanted to make flowers, he wanted to paint. His lifetime want was to reach the top of the slacker career so he hasn't really been that interested in the bakery especially now that Denise has passed and it's been given back to him. So I don't really know what to do. Um, He's also losing a lot of money. At one point he was literally bankrupt, you know, there's nothing in the bank. So I think I might actually sell the bakery, but I'm not sure yet. I have an idea of who would be really good with owning it, but again, I'm not sure. We'll sort of see how that goes. So he's a bachelor, he's a romance sim, and he's very involved with Chanel. They have a very like Nina and Don relationship going on where they'll see other people, they won't ever really, you know, commit as in they won't get engaged or get married or do anything like that, but they'll always sort of come back together. Like this sort of in another life sort of soulmate sort of thing. She is his muse, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> But he has been involved with other women, including Florence Della Rosa. Maybe that's why he wanted to start making flowers. <laughs> they went out on a date, and as they were on this date to the botanical garden in downtown, I realised I hadn't put Florence on birth control. I thought, oh, I'll do that when, when they get back. It's no big deal. <laughs> Nothing's gonna happen. It happened. <laughs> To be fair, I had the the chance set up really high and I didn't realise for a good few rounds I the lowered the chance of a risky woohoo result now. But at the time it was ridiculously high. That's why I have a lot of surprise babies. <laughs> Should be less of those now. They have a son, Alder. I wanted to go for the nature theme. I can't work him out, <laughs> like, at all. He's like Morty and he's like Isaac. He's very, very shy, very nice, but for some reason gets a lot of attention. <laughs> I don't really know what's going on there. He's involved with a few girls. Just wonder if he'll settle down or if he'll be a bachelor like his dad. All I know is, okay, he kind of... <laughs> Every time I look at him, I think he looks like John Cusack in Say Anything, specifically. Yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> yeah, Ramirez, another family with a business that has expanded from the original family of three. So Tessa is now grown up, she's an adult, she's married to Hunshi. He was a downtowny. he was really high up in the politics career, he was a mayor, so level eight. And this round, that's just gone. Uh, a bad chance card fired him. So that was really good. That was great. I think they met 
at work. Tess is also in the politics career. They bond over music and dance. So they got married and they have a daughter, Selena. As for Lisa and Chico, Chico still runs the furniture store and it's level 10. So it's done really well. They've made a lot of money. It's very successful. Tessa doesn't really have any real interest in inheriting it in running it but they do have another daughter they have elena and she is a fortune sim so i think she would be really good for the business i think she would take it on so yeah i don't have any like new families in blue water village i just have the main ones i'm thinking elena uh she's just got back from college so she's in the family bin i think she might move in i might put some like apartments down and start having more people move in and I'd like more sims to start owning businesses. I don't think my sims own enough businesses. <laughs> I really like that. Finally we're gonna go downtown to see the last of my families and also some family bin sims because a lot of sims have come back from college so they're in the family bin right now and we'll see where they go, where their life goes from college in their videos which will be exciting I think. So. <laughs> we have another broke family. We have Bo, his wife, and his alien son. <laughs> Lexi was a downtowny child, and the oldies, Coral and Herb, adopted her in round one. Can you tell that I was really inspired by Pleasant Sims? I mean, she's the whole reason I got back into playing Sims 2 pre -mates. I was already playing it like with my own custom hood daily <laughs> but she got me back into the pre-mates and I sort of took a lot of inspiration from her at the beginning so there's a lot of things that are the same <laughs> just gonna throw that out there yes I know but yeah they adopted a daughter and she met Bo as I think they met as children and they started dating as teenagers and now they're married <laughs> They have a daughter together, Diana, and she's in the family bin because she's just come back from college. And Bo got abducted. <laughs> it's not that he even wanted to. I, I'm a menace, okay? Um, if I want something, if one day I wake up and say, I want Bo Bo to have an alien baby, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I preach all about the wants-based gameplay style, but there are some things that I just really want <laughs> and I will do them. So I look forward to that as well. Look forward to me just deciding randomly I want, I just want some alien kids in my game. He's almost reached the top of the dance career, so he wants to be a ballet dancer and Lexi has reached the top of the education career. So to show you how long I've been playing, how long 9 rounds of gameplay is, uh, they're going to be elders in their round when I play them. So we are going to see them age up to elders, which is very scary because I have never made it that far with Pleasant View. He starts the game as a toddler. Oh, and Michael is just the, the cutest son. <laughs> He's so cute, I love him. <laughs> I can't wait to like show you all my sons. I want you guys to like them as much as I do because <laughs> I will take it personally if you don't. <laughs> and then down the street is, I swear she's not bold, it's custom hair, okay? It happens. <laughs> Who stole your wig queen? They're now elders, Alexander and Lucy, so Alexander Goth and Lucy Burb are elders now. It's just, again, it's crazy seeing how much has changed. <laughs> So they have four children in total. They have eldest Dexter who lives in an apartment. And then they have Willow who I mentioned I wanted to be with Dorian because it would be really cool if they got married and he became Dorian Goth and didn't work out like that. And then they have Jasmine who is also in the family bin because she's just come back from college and their youngest is Luna. Again, I swear, I swear, she's meant to have these really cute pigtails. <laughs> But yeah, Alex has achieved his dream of being the top of the architecture career. Lucy, she wants to do well in the um, law enforcement career, but because she's also a film and literature sim, she also loves writing. So she's written a novel and it did really well. I think it was a bestseller, like, immediately. And she's writing another one. So, you know, as a writer myself, I resonate with that. 
and so we have three households in this apartment like complex that I built. Again, I'm not a builder, but we have another goth family. We have Angel and her wife Jade. She was also a downtownie, I think a child downtownie. They met as children and now they're married. They're living like the, the sapphic dream. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just together with a cat. Uh, Angel is Chanel's younger sister, so she's the youngest daughter of Mortimer and Dina. They're just very laid back, they don't really take life very seriously, no drama, it's, it's nice <laughs> for once. And then the Bachelors currently consist of David Dreamer and Mario Caliente. Kevin Broke used to live with them but he moved out because he got engaged to Mia, who is Mario's sister. <laughs> so David is the son of Darren and Brandy when they were married and he's the father of Eve's twins, Mark and Mary Pleasant. As the household name suggests, he is a bachelor, he has no real plans to settle, and Mario's the same. I just think they'll sort of stay in this apartment forever. They have bank accounts where they're saving up to move out, but I have no real intention of doing that because they don't need to. <laughs> And I'm thinking of adding Kai Lothario to the household just because it cuts down how many households I have if they would just live together. But yeah, Mario is the son of Nina and a Blue Water Village townie, Troy, who passed away this round, so you don't get to see him. Sorry. <laughs> And also in this complex is uh, Dexter Goth. I almost called him Alexander because he is the, the spitting image of his father. It, it's uncanny. He's so artistic and very, um, I want to say hedonistic, I think. Very larger than life. And my favourite thing about him, <laughs> I can't wait for this. Like, this would be like the highlight of round nine for me. He wants to be a warlock. And that's not just like me randomly waking up one day when I was like, I want Bo to have an alien baby. No, he's actually rolled the one and I was amazed because all my sims, if they get any witch or warlock related wants, it's they fear someone else becomes a witch or warlock. Oh, when he rolled that one, I like wanted to scream, I was so happy. So I am focused on doing that for his round and I'd really like to get it on camera <laughs> because I never had apartment life. As a kid, I didn't have that. I've never played a witch or warlock. I can't wait for this round. I, ah. One more family in downtown. And it's another broke family, you know, broke number 50, 100, 1000, trillion. <laughs> so it's Bobby, again, very inspired by Pleasant Sims, <laughs> named after Bob Newby because um, he is unborn baby broke but he's no longer unborn and he's no longer baby <laughs> and he's not broke either they they have a very healthy net worth i think but yeah he's also very easygoing and so is his partner naomi naomi lothario being the only daughter of cassandra and don like i said in the main hood she and isaac sort of have a thing going on and I've been considering this for a while, I kind of see them as being quite open with their relationship. They've never married, they never wanted to, they don't get jealous, I can see them being polyamorous and I think that would be really great. And they have three children, so they have twins, um, Eva and Ethan, who have also just come back from college, they're in the bin, and they have a daughter, a toddler, and they have Ella. She wasn't planned, <laughs> but again that's because I had the risky woohoo settings up way too high. But I mean, they're great parents and they have a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, so I don't really play with these. Um, I didn't get clean or empty stealth hoods, like I said, but I just don't touch these. I kind of pretend they don't exist. I have enough sims to worry about. But yeah, this is Mimi, Mimi Langrab. I'm not really sure where to move her in. Maybe Blue Water Village. She's with Kit Broke, who is the third son of Angela and Dustin. 
so it's really funny to me like a land grab falls in love with a broke very Alanis Morris that we love that and then we have Diana Broke the daughter of Lexi and Bo I'm not really sure what to do with these families so I, I really hope we can sort of decide together I might move her back in with her parents to be honest just while I figure things out see what she decides to do and then we have Kai so I'm gonna move him into the bachelor's household and again see what happens and there's Jasmine Goff, Elena Ramirez. They also need uh, new clothes because I haven't moved them in yet. They aged up to adults. They're not wearing very cute clothes, let's be real. <laughs> She's with Bill Holmo. He was a downtown -y teenager. He's also a Chico teen. I figured if I'm going to involve one Chico teen, I should probably involve them all so ages don't get all weird. I'm kind of hoping to sort of integrate all of them in. And then the twins Eva and Ethan Bright. If you've made it this far, wow, please drink some water, please get something to eat. And I appreciate it was a lot of talking. It was a lot of me just info dumping and talking at you. And I also appreciate this isn't the content a lot of you subscribed for. And it was meant to be brief, but it wasn't very brief because concise is not what I do. <laughs> not my strong point but i hope you did enjoy somewhat <laughs> even if you only watched like a few seconds that's cool too <laughs> the real fun i guess will be in the main series but i wanted to get this done before i did any gameplay series again just so you have a better idea and i don't have to like info dump in those videos each time i'll give basic summaries for each family as like when i start playing them but i thought this would just be easy to get it all done at once how corrupt is foranaville anyway um i can't promise it's gonna be out soon i've been going through it <laughs> life has been i mean i've had better days <laughs> My mental health hasn't been the best, but I'm getting a bit better, I'm getting more energy, I'm regathering my spoons, and I should be able to start working on it more within the next few days, so I'm hoping within... Mm, I think it will be uploaded in June. <laughs> I don't think it will be uploaded in July. I think I will get it done by the end of June. Honestly, no matter how tired I feel, no matter how drained I feel, just knowing that there are people, you guys just out there, who are waiting for me, who say, I'm so looking forward to that video, I want to see your pleasant view, or anything like that, it motivates me, it makes me want to do this, it makes me realise why I wanted to do this and why, and why this is so important to me, just knowing you guys are waiting and it means the world. Oh, and um, again, if you have made it this far, <laughs> then I'd assume you'd really like to watch the series when it goes up, so I wanted to ask you, um, who are you most excited for? Um, which family are you looking forward to seeing? And also, um, which family would you like me to start with? Because I can start with the De La Rosa, or I can start with the Pleasant with Eve. Um, just let me know which one you'd prefer. So yeah, with all that being said, please stay safe, be good, and most of all, happy swimming. Bye! Thank you! Thank you!